Australian Pied Cormorant is also known as the Pied Cormorant, Pied Shag, or Great Pied Cormorant. Sandpipers are any of numerous shorebirds belonging to the family Scolopacidae, which also includes the woodcocks and the snipes. The name sandpiper refers particularly to several species of small to middle-sized birds, about 15 to 30 centimeters long, that throng sea beaches and inland mud flats during migration. A sand dune is a hill or ridge beyond the reach of the tides, formed from sand over many years. They are ever-changing structures. Dunes usually form in bands parallel to the beach, getting taller and more chaotic the further away you get. Traveling further from the beach towards the back of the dunes the vegetation starts to change. Over time, the whole system grows while shifting closer to the sea, and if you look at the dunes, you can see each ridge going through the different vegetation phases in turn. In biology, any group of fish that stay together for social reasons are shoaling, and if the group is swimming in the same direction in a coordinated manner, they are schooling. In common usage, the terms are sometimes used rather loosely. About one quarter of fish species show all their lives, and about one half show for part of their lives. One or the other is happening out here. Gulls are typically medium to large birds, usually grey or white, often with black markings on the head or wings. Pelicans are large water birds. They are characterized by a long beak, and a large throat pouch used for catching prey and draining water from the scooped up contents before swallowing. We are now coming into Port Gibbon, which is a locality in the Australian state of South Australia located on the east coast of Eyre Peninsula about 208 kilometers northwest of the state capital of Adelaide and about 17 kilometers southwest of Cowell. Port Gibbon began as a town surveyed in 1916 and whose name was derived from Captain J. H. Gibbon who was the senior nautical warden of the South Australian Marine Board. Following lobbying of the state government by local residents, a jetty and an associated cutting in the adjoining cliff line were constructed in 1915 to replace a pair of chutes installed by private companies who used to move bags of grain to the beach for loading on two small boats for conveyance to larger vessel anchored off the coastline. It operated as a commercial facility until 1950 and as of 2005, the jetty had been demolished with the exception of a section on the beach which is used as a shelter. Boundaries for the locality were created in 1998 and include both the Port Gibbon Shack site and the government town of Port Gibbon. Port Gibbon consists of land on the coastline with Spencer Gulf which extends from a headland called Point Gibbon, formerly Point Price, in the south for a distance of about 5 kilometers along the southern end of an unnamed bay whose northern end terminates at a headland called The Knob in the adjoining locality of Cowell. The coastline consists of a series of beaches backing onto a cliff line of red bluffs with heights up to 10 meters. A settlement is located at the middle of the bay behind the cliff line. A road runs along the coast both south and north of the settlement. Land use in Port Gibbon is divided between primary industry, conservation and residential with the former being represented by broadacre farming of cereals and livestock, the second being represented by the zoning of the land adjoining the coastline with Spencer Gulf and the latter consisting of the township. 
The port Gibbon camping area is located adjacent to the beach in this tiny isolated Spencer Gulf village. There is little shade in the level gravel camping area, but there are toilets, a dump point, and water. There are things to do here including fishing, bird watching, beach combing, view across Spencer Gulf, it is well away from the highway. Payment for camping here is by donation. I believe the toilets have been upgraded since our visit to here and they now have paid to use showers. We're catching the big guys in our car. This is a gorgeous place that must be visited. The toilets have been upgraded since we were there with pay to use showers. There is a playground for kids as well. There are plenty of areas to camp, gravel and rocky but you can still pitch a tent fine. It now costs $15 per night or $75 per week, with a maximum stay of 14 days. This piece of machinery was the driving axle of the 3 ton fixed crane used for the handling of goods when Port Gibbon was being used for export from 1915 to 1949. Port Gibbon is literally located off the beaten track. A sign post points east of the Lincoln Highway, and if you follow the dirt road down to the ocean, with dust billowing generously in your wake, you will eye travel past many paddocks, and then down a road that is flanked by native vegetation. All of a sudden there is a clearing, and a shack appears almost like a mirage. But then there is another, and another shack behind it. The scub clears and you see boats, vehicles and dogs, evidence of habitation, but as yet, not a person in sight. If you slowly drive through the beachside community, you will pass the camping ground, shacks and travel along Beach Road, where you can turn to get the full view of the Port Gibbon community. It's almost stress-free. The beach is the major feature of Port Gibbon. The orange-red cliffs are a standout. Three retired lads who volunteer their time looking after the camping ground, keeping the public toilets in working order, and generally tidying things up. We are going to take you for a drive around the village now. There is rental accommodation available at Port Gibbon, including the Eco Air Stormbird Cabin, which is an environmentally friendly eco pod with a beach front and is idyllic. Luxury accommodation, fully equipped with a bath for two, barbecue, TV, Wi-Fi, kitchenette, and king bed. It is architecturally designed, perched up above your conveniently located parking spot, you'll have uninterrupted beach views, your little slice of paradise on the Air Peninsula. Then there is a cabin which offers stunning ocean views, taking in the beaches and the coastline it has four bedrooms, kitchen, dining, lounge, and separate bathroom and toilet. They have an outdoor setting with barbecue facilities so you can take in the whole coastal experience. If you're looking for white sandy beaches, beautiful ocean views all from your front veranda plus fantastic fishing just steps away, this is for you. Relax as you will fall in love with the panoramic breathtaking coastal cliffs and white sandy beaches as far as your eyes can see, all from the enjoyment of inside and outside some of the accommodation. Watch a local pod of dolphins as you take in the stunning morning sunrise which is worth getting up for. You may not see them, but there are bomb shelters that were constructed during the Second World War to be used as air raid shelters. Two were also used for radio location. The two had towers each 132 feet high. 
before construction was complete peace was declared so the towers were sold for 10 pounds in 1946. They are located on Department of Defense site in Port Gibbon. Now for those stunning white beaches and red cliffs.